let us now look at the key concept of measurement uncertainty estimation, the combined standard uncertainty. If we speak about measurements, then measurement results are almost always influenced by different factors or they can be calculated from different parameters or quantities. And so, as it is called in measurement science, our measurement result is an output quantity which is influenced by or calculated from a number of input quantities. And now the combined standard uncertainty is the uncertainty of the output quantity which takes into account the uncertainties of all the input quantities. And combined standard uncertainty, as we already saw in the previous lecture, is denoted by UC whereby C means combined. And most of the measurements in chemistry are indirect measurements, meaning that we do not see from our measurement instrument display immediately the result, the answer, but rather we measure different quantities, different parameters, and calculate from their values our measurement result value. And all such measurements were from values of input quantities, the output quantities calculated are called indirect measurements. And a good example is titration. When we do titration, we need to know titrant concentration. We need to know the volume of our sample solution that we took for titration. And we also need to know the volume of titrant, what was consumed for this titration. And then we can calculate the concentration of the analyte in our sample solution. And such equation which links together the output quantity with all the input quantities is called measurement model. So this is here a typical measurement model for a titration with one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So we have here the volume of titrant that was consumed, the molar concentration of the titrant, and then the volume of the sample solution which was taken for titration. And from these data we can calculate the analyte concentration in the sample solution. And now it is important to ask that if we know the uncertainties of the input quantities, and if we know what the model looks like, how do we find the combined standard uncertainty of the output quantity? And there are several simpler cases and one general case. So first of all, the simplest case that can be is that all the factors or all the input quantities are simply summed or subtracted to get for us the output quantity value. A typical case where this sort of equation holds is the volume of a pipette where the different uncertainty sources can be considered as factors or input quantities and their uncertainties are then combined according to this simple rule which we have already seen. So if our equation contains only additions and subtractions we simply take all the standard uncertainties of all the input quantities, take them to the square, sum them up and take square root. It is important to note that even though we have here subtraction and here addition, we nevertheless always write additions here. So it does not matter whether it is plus or minus, here it will always be plus. And of course it is uh, easy to follow uh, that this is correct way of doing, that all these quantities of course need to have the same units. Only then it is allowed to combine their standard uncertainties as this. And of course, it, let us once again remember that all the uncertainties before we combine them need to be converted to the standard uncertainty level. Now, a second very common type of measurement model is 
model that is composed only of multiplications and divisions. And in fact, the titration model that we saw a few slides ago is a typical example of this. In this case now, the combined, the combined standard uncertainty of the output quantity is calculated in a slightly more complex way. Now we do not add combined standard uncertainties of the input quantities because very often those input quantities in fact have different units so we are not allowed to add them. Instead, we add their relative standard uncertainties. So in all these cases the standard uncertainty of the respective input quantity is divided by its value. Standard uncertainty divided by value, etc. And again, importantly, whether it is multiplication or division, we always have plus signs here. We never put minus into this equation. And when this here is calculated, then this expression actually gives us the relative combined standard uncertainty of the output quantity. And this relative combined standard uncertainty of the output quantity can be multiplied by the value of the output quantity so that we can get the combined standard uncertainty of the output quantity in the same units as this output quantity is measured in. And now the general case. The output quantity is now found as a function of the input quantities whereby it is not important what mathematical operations are included here. They can be summing, subtracting, multiplication, division, squares, square roots, logarithms, etc. And in this general case, the combined standard uncertainty of the output quantity is found from square, the square root of squared summing of such uncertainty components. So each of these terms here is called uncertainty component of the respective input quantity. And each of them in turn is composed of the standard uncertainty of the input quantity and the partial derivative of the output quantity with respect to that input quantity. In fact, the two previous cases are special cases from this general case. So if the partial derivative calculation is done, then for those previous cases, we arrive at those more simple equations. But this equation is completely universal and we will use it later in this course. And I will also demonstrate for you how you can calculate those partial derivatives quite easily without going very deeply into mathematics. And also it is important to stress that all of those equations on the previous slides, they strictly saying work only for non-correlating input quantities. In most of the cases in chemical analysis, we can regard input quantities as non-correlating, but there will be few special cases, which I will, will then demonstrate separately, where there really is correlation but at least in simple chemical analysis, correlation usually does not have such a strong effect that we would really need to worry about it very much.